To answer the question of what is a quantum computer, you first have to say what's a classical computer. A classical computer is a system that uses, in one form or another, zeros and ones. Quantum mechanics allows things to be in a superposition of states. They can be a zero and a one at the same time. So imagine the whole insides of your classical computer in which every transistor is both in a state of being on and off at the same time. In the last few decades, people have realized that if you had such a machine, you could do uh, exponentially faster computation using it on certain problems. Uh, once we have the ability to compute in uh, a billion dimensions at the same time, uh, it becomes hard to imagine maybe what you can't do with such a machine. And uh, we'll probably end up discovering all kinds of problems that uh, we didn't even think about now. But that said, there are some problems that are uh, relevant to computer science into our modern world, like teaching machines to think, training machines in a kind of machine learning technique. And the hope is that we'll be able to accelerate those problems just like the known problems that we already know we can accelerate. We're looking for ways to accelerate problems that we really care about. You might ask, uh, do we need computers to be better than they are now? Are we, are we done with the computer age? And I think it's fair to say that there are many properties of materials, many chemical reactions, um, many aspects of life around us that we don't have access to uh, in a computational uh, format. We can't simulate materials at all. We have to guess at their behavior. We can't design drugs. We have to guess at how they might work and then do experiments accordingly. So the future of computation, I think, involves quantum mechanics because molecular interactions, material science, all of the properties of materials are quantum problems. And you can't solve a quantum problem with a classical computer. The only computer that can solve quantum problems is a quantum computer. So everything that has to do with building up quantum systems, like how does a drug work? You wouldn't think of that as being a quantum mechanics problem, but it is. And so understanding those kinds of problems that start from the molecular level and end up with materials. Materials like superconductors, for instance, where we really don't know whether there's such a thing as a room temperature superconductor, and we don't have computers that can calculate such things. So we hope that a machine that uses the same principles as the systems we're trying to study will give us access. I think that the biggest challenges in the physics aspects of what we're doing are, um, and I should say, also the place where the biggest breakthroughs have happened, because of the, however hard the problem is, that's probably where you can make the most rapid advance, is in material science. Uh, that is, we've understood how to build the objects that we're trying to build for a while. The problem is that the materials don't exist in order to build the components. So some of the breakthroughs that have come out of Copenhagen uh, have been in material science, where we've developed ways of putting materials together that have never been put together before. We're you know, taking a, a certain approach to quantum computing, which we hope will have advantages over alternative approaches, although I have to say it's very early in the game now. And this is a, a, a test to be run whether or not the idea of using topological states as the basis of quantum computing uh, will turn out to be vastly advantageous compared to alternative forms of qubits. Now, our friends and colleagues uh, who are working on alternatives are also trying as hard as they can to push their own field forward. I think that Microsoft's commitment is to make the machine. Our best guess at what the machine will be right now is, is topological, but that remains to be tested. I think it's important to say with regard to the Microsoft collaboration that uh, the, my group has been collaborating with Microsoft for almost 10 years now, which means before I came to the University of Copenhagen, we had an established collaboration. Once we were at the University of Copenhagen, it was um, one of the first things that, that, that I did upon getting here was to reconnect Microsoft with the University of Copenhagen, introduce people to people, and to get the collaboration going again. What's happened in the last year has been and not just driven by Microsoft, but, be, but driven by the world that has come to recognize that quantum technology is moving fast, is that Microsoft is increasing its activity here in Copenhagen and um, bringing in additional support, uh, both at University of Copenhagen and at the other sites around the world. But the fundamental problem that we've been working on, which is to develop the technology for a topological quantum computer, has been something that's been going on for a long time. It's, advancing and accelerating 
uh, here at University of Copenhagen, uh, but it's something which has been developed at Microsoft, I would say, over the last 15 years, and that I've been a part of as a researcher for the last 10. It's a little bit um, early to say that, uh, that the topological approach to quantum computing will work. But you could ask, when will we know that the topological character of these quantum states gives us some computational power? And the answer is, once we show that the qubits, the quantum bits that we make, have a lifetime longer than other bits. We haven't done it yet. The next step is to build a qubit and to study its coherence time and to study in particular how does turning on the topological character extend the lifetime.